Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.3 pollution. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 20.3 you need to describe the effects of untreated sewage and excess fertilizer on aquatic ecosystems, describe the effects of non-biodegradable plastics and describe the sources and effects of air pollution. For extended you also need to explain the process of eutrophication. Untreated sewage and agricultural fertilizers can have a devastating effect on aquatic ecosystems if they find their way into the water supply. When sewage is emptied into rivers or rainwater contaminated with fertilizers runs off the land, microscopic algae in the water are supplied with an excess of nitrates and phosphates. The algae grow rapidly, preventing light from reaching the plants below and causing oxygen levels to fall. Plants are unable to photosynthesize, fish can't breathe and the entire ecosystem system collapses. Plastics are non-biodegradable, meaning decomposers like fungi and bacteria cannot break them down. This means that unless they're recycled, which isn't very energy efficient, or burned, which causes air pollution, discarded plastics will remain in the environment, taking up valuable space and harming the organisms that live there. Plastic waste can leach harmful chemicals into the soil, affecting plant growth, microbial communities and the overall health of the ecosystem. Animals may get trapped in plastic bottles, entangled in nylon fishing nets or consume plastic bags, mistaking them for food. Ingesting plastics can internally injure, poison or even malnourish the animal by blocking their digestive system. Over time, plastic breaks down into smaller fragments called microplastics, which are consumed by a wide range of organisms and accumulate in the food chain. Finally, you need to describe the sources and effects of air pollution. So the predominant media-endorsed theory of climate change suggests that increased concentrations of certain gases in the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide and methane, are causing the Earth's average temperature to rise. This is referred to as the enhanced greenhouse effect. Both natural processes and human activities, such as burning fossil fuels, cause the greenhouse gases to accumulate in the atmosphere, trapping heat radiation from the sun. Sources of carbon pollution include the burning of coal, oil and natural gas, and deforestation, since trees photosynthesize, removing carbon from the atmosphere. Methane is produced in the stomachs of animals, including cattle, and released during the extraction of coal and oil. Now, theoretically, a significant rise in temperatures could melt polar ice, leading to a rise in sea levels and the flooding of low-lying land. It may also contribute to extreme or changing weather conditions and the extinction of species that are unable to adapt to the changing climate. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core, but for extended, you also need to explain the process of eutrophication. So eutrophication occurs when a body of water becomes enriched with nutrients, usually from agricultural runoff or sewage outflows. The excess of nitrates and other ions in the water leads to an overgrowth of algae, which eventually die and sink to the bottom of the river or lake. Algae are broken down by bacteria, which acquire their energy through aerobic respiration. This gradually removes dissolved oxygen from the water, resulting in the death of animals that rely on oxygen for survival. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 20.3, pollution. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 20.4, conservation.